vast mayhem unfolded in at least nine cities, towns, and localities. In the Romia region, where a mob of hundreds and thousands of Oromo youth killed 167 Ethiopians, according to official statements, and burned down houses and businesses worth hundreds of millions of dollars. The killing and property damages were vicious, genocidal, and mainly targeted at non Oromo Ethiopians. The mob moved from house to house, killing and including families of certain ethnic backgrounds, defiled their dead bodies in the most gruesome manner imaginable, including, in at least one instance, dragging the dead body of their victim behind a motorbike around town, and another instance, hanging the dead body on a wooden pole. In at least one case, a hotel guest was burned to death inside a hotel that was set afire by the mob. The government of Ethiopia is to be condemned for apprehending those who are directly connected to the assassination of Haichalu and Desa. The police has also arrested a number of individuals who are suspected of playing a part in the assassination of the artist and using his death to instigate a dangerous inter-ethnic clash between the two major ethnic groups, the Romo and the Mahara. These individuals hijacked the artist's body against the wish of his family and brought it to Addis Ababa, as long with their personal armed guard and incited their mob followers for violence, as a result of which at least 10 individuals lost their lives in the ensuing clash. The government is also to be credited for its swift actions in closing down some media outlets that have a history of fomenting discord among ethnic groups in Ethiopia. Together with the temporary blackout of the internet, we believe the government has averted what could have been a much more catastrophic outcome. Sadly, the federal and regional governments failed to prevent the carnage and destruction in the Romia region. Even though they have subsequently taken into custody thousands of Oromo youth for taking part in the ethnic and uh, motivated killings and property destruction, dozens of Oromia state and security officials were arrested for either taking part in the violence or failing to fulfill their duties of protecting citizens from the violence. In the past two years, the new Ethiopian government has been reluctant to exercise its law enforcement responsibility in fear of being seen as stifling legitimate dissent to tolerate unintentional and minor transgressions in the exercise of newly found democratic rights. And not to give extremists, ethno-nationalists, an excuse to cause more instability and violence. For example, the government refrained from taking any meaningful action when in October 2019, a similar ethnic violence was instigated by one of the individuals currently in police custody causing the death of at least 86 Ethiopians in the hands of a mob of Oromo youth. The refrainment or lack of meaningful law enforcement action on the part of the government only emboldens extremists, setting the ground for recent violence in the process. The political democratization efforts, the econ economic reforms, and the peace stability of the country are sabotaged. By extremists, Bow to advance narrow, exclusionary, and under democratic agendas at whatever cost. We trust the Canadian Embassy in Addis Ababa has briefed the Canadian government regarding these unfortunate developments in Ethiopia. What we want to bring to your attention is how the truth of these sad events have been shamelessly falsified and presented by some individuals and groups. Here in Canada, including via letter, According to the Prime Minister and in interviews to the Canadian media, the, this propaganda conducted by some groups among the diaspora Ethiopians of Oromo heritage changes the Ethiopian government as killing ethnic Oromos. This falsehood is not a mere shifting or scapegoating exercise. It is a meticulously orchestrated propaganda intended to, one, on one hand, smear the legitimate, if only delayed, uh, only delayed law enforcement actions of Ethiopian government as human rights abuse, and on the other hand, to agitate the Oromo youth in Ethiopia for another cycle of ethnic violence. The individuals who are masterminding the propaganda the individuals who are masterminding this propaganda from the comfort of the residents in the U.S., Canada, Europe, and Australia are, as we speak, using satellite televisions and social media, calling upon the Oromo youth for violence. In much the same way, the RCLM, 
did in Rwanda during the ethnic genocide over 25 years ago. These individuals and groups even have the audacity to call upon the Canadian government to revive diplomatic relations, withhold any de development assistance, and make the Ethiopian government. They have attempted to infiltrate popular causes such as Black Lives Matter in their desperation to gain media and public attention. They even make a mockery of the historical injustice indigenous people suffered here in Canada and also elsewhere by drawing a parallel to utterly fabricate ill treatment of ethnic Oromos in Ethiopia. The Oromo are the largest ethnic group in Ethiopia, making over 30% of the Ethiopian population. The Oromia region is entirely governed by ethnic Oromos and most key police and military positions at the federal level are occupied by individuals with an Oromo heritage. Not to mention the current Prime Minister of Ethiopia is an Oromo by ethnicity. We also acknowledge the peace-loving nature of the Oromo people in general. The Aroma region is inhabited by tens of millions of Ethiopians with non-Aroma or mixed heritage who live there for generations and have no other place they can call home. The, original, the ordinary Oromo have nothing to do with the recent carnage or the many before it. On the contrary, many of the ordinary Oromo have lost their lives protecting their non-Aroma neighbors and friends. The problem in Aromia, as in some parts of the country, is exclusively the creation of the elite and organized political and armed groups who brainwash and use the unsuspecting youth to achieve their political power, ambitions, and undemocratic rights. In closing, we ask the Canadian government, the media, and the public to investigate the truth before forming an opinion or reach any conclusion on the basis of the loud voices of those who have no respect for the truth. Sincerely, Hailu Elena, President of the Ethiopian Canadian Community Association in Edmonton. And I'm, I was born here, I, you know, I've never even been back to Ethiopia, I don't know.